In the last section, we went over setting up our mean seed stack so we could start coding. And in this video, we're going to go over JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, which are our front end languages. So if we look at our files, we can see that there is an app folder, and inside of that is an SRC, which stands for source folder, where our front end files are. And inside of modules, we have directives, pages, and services. We're just going to take a look at our dev test page. So if we go into the test directory, we can see we have an HTML file and then two JavaScript files. The .spec one is a test file. We'll come back to that later, but for now we're going to focus on the HTML and the JavaScript file. And you'll notice there is no less file here. Not all pages require one, but we can create one. So we will take our HTML file and we will just paste one in here and we will rename it test.less. And then we will open that up in a text editor and blank that out. And we can start adding to this a little bit later. One thing we'll need to do is include this new file we created. And the way we do that is in build files, which we will go over a little bit more later. But in config, there is this build files modules.json. And this basically tells us all of our files that we have. So if we search for test.html, we see we have the three files we just looked at in that folder there. And we just need to make a new entry for our less file that we just created. So we'll just call it less because that's the type of file it is. And our file we called test.less. And if we save that and then rerun grunt, we will now have this file be included when we run our page. So first thing we'll do is we'll just look at our page by default. So if our node server is running, we just see it says test and it has this ID false here. And we're going to take a look at the HTML and see why it looks like that. So if we go back to our test folder, open test.html, we can see that we have this div here and then test br is a tag that is for a line break. And then we have user output right here. So HTML is basically just the layout and it has divs, which is mostly what you're going to see. And you can just think of a div as a box on the page. So if we look back at our page, this div is a box right here. And then this div is another box right here. These are our line breaks right there. And that's really all HTML. It's just a bunch of boxes on a page. And if we want to change our HTML, it's just like editing a text file. We save it and then we rerun grunt. And then we look back at our page. If we refresh, we can see it now says test one. So that's the very basic level of, of HTML. And without any styling, it's just going to all look the same. But let's say we want to make this uh, change color. And the way we could do that is on our less file, we can say dot test. And then we can say color blue. And if we save that and we rerun grunt, that will change our text color. And the reason I put dot test right here, this is referencing a class because it has a dot in front of it. And if we look at our HTML, we have class equals test right here. So it'll basically make everything inside this div will be applied these styles, which in this case is color blue. So if we refresh our browser, we can see now our text changed to color blue. And the final thing we'll talk about is our JavaScript file. So our HTML and our less or our CSS are the things that do our layout and our styling. And if we want dynamic content, that's where JavaScript comes in. So in Angular, scope means a variable that it has two-way data binding, which means if we change something in the JavaScript, it'll show up in our HTML. So if we say scope.myvar for a new variable, and then just say var1, and we save that, and then we reference this myvar in our HTML right here, just say myvar, you basically type everything after the scope dot. So if we look in our control, we have scope.myvar, so we just reference that part. And if we save that and rerun grunt as normal, if we refresh the page, we can now see we have this var1 show up right here. And the cool thing about this is this content isn't hard coded. So whereas we actually had to change the HTML here for this to change, if we change my var in the JavaScript, we can have it show up in the HTML. So now if we refresh, 
we have var2 and here it's really simple and it doesn't show the power over it but if we were to load something from a database let's say this could be one user and you know we could load a different user and the same HTML will now display different users because we can use variables so that's the big power of JavaScript it gives you the access for dynamic content that's a really brief overview of HTML JavaScript and CSS or less um, you can type any CSS inside of a less file less is just a preprocessor you can use it just the same as CSS and again this isn't meant to be a comprehensive overview of how to use these three languages there are lots of good tutorials online for those in the next video we'll talk about JavaScript asynchronous flow with promises and callbacks